Table for Truth. So, uh, welcome for another episode of Table for Truth, and uh, we're still here. So, good to have everybody here on the show, everybody in the back of the audience. Um, you know, the key grip, the camera grew, you know, the gaffer over there. What's going on, Mike? <laughs> I just like to add a little pizzazz to the show. Uh, anyway, man, what's what's going on this week? Have you been any anything you're you're feeling or? Well, I, let's just leap right on in. Let's leap right on into the issues of the day. Okay. I like it. Last Friday, mm -hmm. uh, former President Trump spoke to the South Carolina Black Conservative Federation mm -hmm. uh, at their annual gala. Okay. And uh, he said a uh, few things in his speech to the audience that uh, raised an eyebrow. He began that the uh, bright lights are in his eyes and he can't see too many people out there, but he could see only black ones. <laughs> okay. And so um, he said, I got indicted and a lot of people said, that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and were discriminated against. And then Trump mentioned his mugshot and asked, do you know who really embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. They are selling t-shirts for $19. And Trump, Trump mugshot t-shirts? Yes. You know, love them or hate them, I'd buy a Trump shirt. That sounds kind of cool. It's just one of those collector items. And he said, uh, millions have been sold. Okay. But uh, right up there with my Cactus Jack wanted dead t shirt. Uh, don't don't forget on. the caption under the mugshot said, What? Never surrender. I like it. Uh, the problem with that is that that mugshot was when Trump surrendered to authorities at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. Are you going to ruin the August. moment here? It doesn't mean that technically so he surrendered. It means he, he doesn't has surrender. A oh, I He's said it at time when I first broken. saw it. His spirit isn't broken despite the fact that they've been... His taken. spirit Real isn't running. broken? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, despite how much you want to break his spirit. I don't, I don't want to break his spirit. You go out of your way more than any other character that we talk about to just lambast Trump. You don't do it with anybody else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like I don't know why, but you, you may be that, a, a, the perfect candidate for that's Trump not derangement true. syndrome. Like, you can't stop talking about him. I thought there was something else we could talk about. Bro. Uh, I'm sorry. He is running to be president of the United States. Okay. When he says something and does something as a presidential candidate... Again, in front of the Black Conservative Federation, okay, let me saying ask that this. he can't see anybody how did, how but did the, the black, black people. What's more important is how did the Black Conservative Federation take this? Did they write a press release saying we want nothing to do with Trump? Of course not. So then what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that even though he liked more of the black vote, mm -hmm. where he got about 8%. In 2016, okay, you got about 8% in 2020. He wants to siphon some more black votes off, and I don't have any, any problem. But okay, but the, the problem, problem is, is that he's insensitive. Well, no, he's insensitive. To, to, That's to part of his people. charm. So, uh, the he's question moved. that I ask those 8% is really <laughs> what, what, ha what did he do for you? In the four years he was president. Well, if I may quote several people I know that happened to be black. What, they were making more money? They were making more money than mm. that they were now. And they didn't have to pay so much for food and gas. So that's what they're seeing. Not everybody, but the people I know mm -hmm. that share with me. So I guess we can be at peace with that. Anything else you'd like to add about Trump's uh, Trump just being Trump? I mean... <laughs> No, I'm good on Trump. Okay, great. All right, so what else we got? All right. Well, uh, we did discuss uh, the unfortunate death of Alexei Navalny. I remember that last week, yes. Uh, 
we've got new reports that uh, there were talks to free Navalny, uh, and these talks were in their final stages. Ah, what a coincidence. With him and two what other Americans for a Russian alleged assass assassin who's currently in jail in Germany. Much better trade-off than uh, what's-her-name from the WNBA last year against Destro there, but yes. Um, well, it's too bad. I mean, like, like we had a whole show last week on this and how, ironically, this actually just shows the hypocrisy on, on um, the idea of government overreach because it, it goes both ways. I mean, there's government overreach here from Russia, right, just like there was government overreach in New York recently. Remember that? We were talking about this. So, Alexei's death, which is tragic, what can be done now? I mean, what is the... Uh... Well, like you did last week, and you're doing the same thing. What's that? You are putting or equating the United States government versus the Russia government. I'm putting the spirit of hypocrisy and government overreach into question and into the light. That's all I'm doing. I'm not... I'm not saying anything more than that. I, I feel like... Well, government overreach in the United States, you don't end up dead. No, you just end up uh, canceled, uh, financially ruined, and, you know, shafted. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I guess we could be grateful for that. Let's let's look at it that way. But that still doesn't make this, the current establishment in New York running the government there kind of douchebags for allowing what happened. I mean, or at least the people that participated in this witch hunt against Trump. But please... Uh, now I'm pulling a U. I'm bringing it up, and I should. Um, well, let's uh, let's. Okay, so what about what about this post mortem situation? Well, the question is a lot of people ask, and will continue to answer. Was three years in jail since he recovered from the poisoning after returning from Germany? Why now? We didn't. Know, why now? Now why did he die now? Right, we didn't. We, we asked that question last week. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Course, we, we used an analogy of that. Okay, what was the analogy? Well, the analogy was, uh, you know, if a certain person who happens to be bright orange on, t on TV uh, was doing some, you know, fudging the numbers on his real estate... Uh, years ago, why now during an election? Remember the analogy there that we used? But but please continue. Okay. Sorry. And then I, I, I dismissed that. And you said that they started it three, four years ago. Yes. And because of Trump's delay tactics, hence the reason it's run into election season. Okay. Still doesn't make any less douchey, but okay. Um, okay, so anyway, yeah, why now? Because clearly... Well, actually, no. You know what? Why don't you answer that? Because okay. what, what am I going with? Well, this? if these current reports are true, because uh, Alexei's uh, representatives have said that they were in talks, and it appears that the family agreed uh, with this release, and again, they were in the final stages. The United States says after being questioned about this, it said, yep. well, they were at the beginning stages of talk for yep. possible release. But that seems a problem that whether it was Putin or someone high in the government uh, didn't want Alexei to be released, whether or not to take him off the table as a chip uh, in the negotiations or to say that, I'm sorry, you, you're not going to be free and be a problem for the Russian government. You're not going to be around much longer to be a problem, period. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't put it past anything. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate. I, I agree with you. But uh, we also had recently a, another death in the family, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, this was a story that somehow I missed last summer. There was a Russian helicopter pilot who defected. I heard about Ukraine. that, and he dragged three of his comrades with him into uh, Spain, I believe, right? Well, no. They, uh, they landed in Ukraine. They had aircraft parts and turned it over. Um, they turned the, uh, pot, the, uh, the equivalent attack helicopter to the Ukrainian authorities. Right. Along with, there was aircraft parts on board also, which, you know, they're still flying some of their MiGs that they had 
from uh, Russia long ago. Right. So Instead that, of getting something. him on a realist relocation, just goes to show you, uh, he was just floating around naively somewhere in Spain where he was assassinated. Right. And so, yeah, I, I didn't... I, How does that work? Like, like, a guy like that, like, you put him on a witness relocation program, ASAP. Like, you don't let him run around and frolic in Spain. Like... I, I have, I, you know, if I get information, because I found that fascinating, because the first question I asked was that. What are you doing in Spain? You should be under rock, undercover somewhere, because we've seen Putin Maybe the take out money. people yeah. in... in Great Britain. We've seen them make an attempt in the United States. They got bagged before they got close. Um, and he's he's taking out some other people in, in Europe. And so, again, I that's a question that I, I will Maybe research. Maybe they gave him a choice, and, they, and he didn't know any better, and they figured they could save money and just be like, you want to just hang out in Spain? You know, we'll, we'll pay for a condo or whatever, or we could put you in a strict witness relocation program, which will cost us more money. I don't, I don't know what the reason is. I, well, I, I, I think he made, unfor- you know, unfortunately it was not the best of choice. No, well, staying, staying in Ukraine while it's under war is not exactly a, a great safe place. That's not a good place <laughs> either, but at either, that point you might as well just go back to the Kremlin and just wear no, one of those Groucho Marx mustaches well, with the I, sunglasses I would, I would, and just hope for the best. I would have attempted to make my way to the United States. And, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated, but yeah, all right. But uh, I found that... Uh, <sighs> This is good, man. You're like dishing out like bullets. It's almost like the evening news uh, on terms of world events and things that we don't normally think about in terms of current events. I like this. It's and now tonight it's time for Tyson's take on evening news, evening world news events. Please continue. These are good. Okay. These are good little shorts. Well, well, we know that President Biden had promised additional sanctions uh, for the death of Navalny, so. Late last week, the White House announced that they'd launched 500 new sanctions on Russia. Okay. And so my first question when I heard that is, where they been? Yep. You know, we should have thrown the book at them as soon as he invaded Ukraine. Why do we have sanctions left in our bag at 500 of them? 500. Not, what, are, not, what are some of them? I, I, I don't know, because there's 500, so I didn't even start to... Uh, mostly going after some of the oligarchs that they felt were responsible or for Alexei being in jail. Uh, so they, they tried to take out some of the... So they, they want to go out, they being the West, the, yes. the NATO influence by the World Economic Forum. No, not the, the NATO. oligarchs, if you will, of our own land part of the world, want to, want to vilify uh, the hit piece on a political enemy and trying to ruin this person. Granted, it went, to, it went straight to murder, which is not good at all. Uh, but these are similar tactics that the oligarchs of the West do upon anybody that they don't like. A, a kill them? They don't kill them, but they pretty much ruin them. Well, you, once again, you're making a you, comparison. You, you can spiritually not, kill somebody not, versus physically kill them. It's almost the same. killing. So. Yeah, you can ruin, you can rob them $355 million, ruin their reputation, try to keep demonizing left and right, make them so that they're always a, a, a target of the mainstream media as a piece of ridicule. Uh, there's many ways you can go about this. Look, it's, look it's who keeps bringing up Trump. You keep saying that. I, I didn't mention the orange man. I just simply was well, giving who, you an who example. Well, who else just got hit with well, a who's, three Well, who's saying that that's inaccurate? Million. That's completely fair. I mean, like, like, I just think it's hypocritical that they're, they're like, like, I'm not, I'm not applauding this, that's ha- that, you know, Goligars have done this and hit peace on, on this Alexi guy. I'm just saying, I just think it's, it's kind of ironic that, Short of killing somebody, and and we don't even we, we don't even know about the Hillary stuff, right? The Epstein things, we don't know where that's going. Those seem like a little bit of those oligarchs. Hillary things. and Epstein. You remember how like the, there was a rumor going around that every time an opponent of Hillary like just happened to end up oh, like, drowning God. in a pool, you know what I mean? Like like choked to death, electrocuted, like you name it. I I don't I don't know what to say. It's not like that. Like our part of the world is is that much cleaner than this. But but yeah, this is very unfortunate. I, I agree with you there. I do agree with you. But again, my questioning is, why are we hitting Russia? I, we still have stuff in the bag. You know, the whole thing was, 
when we originally hit Russia with additional sanctions when they invaded Ukraine, was to make it extremely painful and that he would want to end this war as soon as possible. But there's but, even more but, what, what, but what we've seen is Russia has appears to be at least... Caught sure not and headstrong. Well, it's not just that, but there, we, we haven't seen any uprising. And Tucker Carlson was going through the supermarkets, and he says, yeah, supermarkets are good to go. Everything's looking all right, yeah. Right. Well, and So that tactic doesn't work. So well, well, much, much like a video game, when the boss starts to shake and turn red in different colors, right? When you're about to try to destroy the boss... You start to see all these superpowers come out, right? Like, where, where in this case, this would be analogous to the bag of tricks of sanction, sanctions that uh, could be thrown out against Putin. Would, would that be a fair, uh, you know, just a, assumption? <laughs> like, I, I think uh, they're really starting to scrape the barrel now to try to do something and stop, like, the, uh, the Putin sympathizing at all costs. Um, amongst other things that are happening in the West where people are having to seriously losing their faith in the current establishment. Uh, I think that's probably the, the answer to your, your existential questions concerning uh, why now. Is that fair? No. Okay, so you have a better proposal. Well, go ahead. I'd like to hear it. No, well, the whole thing is, in, in my mind, was we were supposed to make it hurt so bad that Putin would want to get out of Ukraine. Well, apparently we didn't. This. We didn't, right? And some of it is that uh, what is it that Russia is depending on? Um, how is it that, 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 that <laughs> you know, how, is it how energy? Is, I don't think how, it's energy. How, how is, is it Putin, food? I don't think it's food. How, how is Putin trade? I don't think it's trade. Continuing to pay for this war. Uh, the people of Europe needing energy and heat. Uh, it's oil. Europe has weaned themselves off of Russian oil. It is the Chinese, it is Iran, and Good particularly India. You're not suggesting that the Western uh, power brokers in Europe are short-sighted, are you? No. Short-sighted how? Well, the amount of uh, heat prices going up in Europe for almost anybody you know, has really hurt them economically. Uh, or is that just heat, a... heat prices are going up in Europe? They have gone up, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, in the last couple of years. They, they've, they've gone up ever since that pipeline fiasco and everything mm -hmm. else. Like Ever since the Ukraine was invaded. Folks, you can look this one up yourself, but I believe heat has gone up. Like, the okay. heating prices and stuff have gone up mm -hmm. for people in Europe. And it's all because... Da -da 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 -da. It's all because what? You know... Finish it. It's Putin, all because of what? Like, they're pissing Putin and the Russians off a little bit. And, you know, ironically, Europe didn't really have a backup infrastructure on getting heat if they ever got uh, went to, you know, war with Russia. And so the prices go up a little bit. And um, now people are in more danger than they were. And I believe that pipeline uh, incident also didn't help, right? Because that cut off a little bit of the uh, flux of... Oil going into Europe. Well, well, the the Europe had had ref weaned themselves off of Russian oil. <laughs> they didn't do a good job of it, apparently, because they're suffering pretty bad in terms. No, of they're not heat. suffering pretty bad. Well, you don't. Live prices there, went. Really? Prices went down. Is that what you're saying? I didn't know. Prices might have gone up, okay. but uh, you know they're not suffering. That's what they're, you're making it sound. They're definitely they're inconvenienced. And they should, Okay, if they don't happen to run an airport somewhere in Europe and make, we won't disclose the amount of money uh, such a person makes, and they make more closer to the equivalent of 30000 a year or something, and they're the mom, you know, single parent of two people, they're suffering quite a bit, yes. I think that's a fair assessment. There's a lot of people and, and, that are in that category. And wh where are you getting your... Because I, I haven't looked up exactly... How much their oil prices have gone? Well, up. I'll just make this. But but I'll just it make sounds this like you're making a, an assumption that I'm not making an assumption. I'm I'm using the anal the analogy of just the demographic of like lower middle class individuals in the postmodern world. How many people do you know? Uh, in in our modern world right now, just even in this part of the world, how many people do you know that are like single parents or are making forty thousand a year and less and and have to like support people like a couple kids or so? How many people do you know? Uh, I don't know why. Okay, I know quite a few. There is okay. a difference, and, and and if I just in use Europe. that, no, even in the United States, the no, same, no, no, the, the in same Europe, we were problems. talking about Europe. 
So, well, gas prices go up, okay? Okay. And I've, I've seen quite a few podcasts on people that actually live in Europe where, like, yeah, in Germany, it's it's pretty tight. The Netherlands, it's not good. Right. Right? Like, it's not great. It's not like, I, I you know, I'm starving, but it's it's not good. It could be right, much let, better. Let, you just brought up our gas prices. What, what about our gas prices? Our gas prices are still somewhat high, okay? Uh, they're averaging three twenty a gallon. That's yeah, somewhat that's, high? that sucks. Remember when it was two oh eight a gallon? Oh, uh, when was that? I think during the Trump era. Right? Oh, in twenty twenty, when in the middle of the pandemic, no, when not the pandemic. Well, no, 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 nobody no. before that was really? before that. Yeah, like like at the beginning of Trump's era, if you will, I believe gas prices were like somewhere around two ten on average, somewhere in that ballpark. We'd have to look it up historically, but I believe it was that's about right. Like right. they were pretty low. They're not three twenty. We shouldn't rejoice that they're three twenty when they well, really? well, or we because they're not seven dollars oh, oh, a gallon. Oh, 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 gee, we, I guess we can listen right. to That's Trump, who, to who this people. weekend, past weekend, said that they were six dollars a gallon, and, and he was lying again. Well, it feels like they're six dollars a gallon these prices, but like let's just say even three twenty. That's terrible. But the thing is, Europe uh, got themselves off of Russian oil not only because of the invasions, but they they can no longer be influenced by Russia by taking their oil, but again, great. It, in it, the meantime, a whole generation of people suffer with that big middle finger in Russia, and that's fine as long as you're one of these old like rich people that go to Davos and fly your Learjet. It's not a big deal. Or if you're really upper class and you live in like a condo in the middle of the city, I guess it's not that problem. But for everybody else, they're just like, what the hell is this? Okay. Since there's All right, more so people like that than not. Let's go you to you, X. Him. Yeah, let's go to me. Let's what go what to do you want to know about? Me? All right. Should we is... be supporting Ukraine? No, I think we already went over this every freaking week. No, we didn't go over it every I think, Okay, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that with, with actually what a, a friend of mine uh, who chastised me during a, a, a pro wrestling match when we were talking about geopolitics. He's not in the wrong, though. What I should have said when you said to me on a previous episode, well, what should we do with Ukraine, right? My answer now, if I could do it all over or just appear in this episode, and you ask me what should be done with Ukraine, I would say, let us have more peace talks with Russia from the West. From the West to Russia, let's have more peace talks. Let's do that. Let's do our best to have those peace talks. That's my answer to you. Okay, let's have more peace talks. And who... Is doing peace talks. Well, certainly not the uh, power brokers of the West that seem to want to continue a war with Ukraine. But in, in theory, in a perfect world, uh, those power brokers would serve the people because that's what they were elected for. And they would try to have peace talks with Russia and just come come up with a compromise. That, w- that would be the most functional solution. Well, you make it sound And we talked about this, like how the United States... Ukraine's running out of men and women, uh, particularly men, I believe. Uh, to actually physically serve in the battlefield, but well, the average age of the Ukrainian fighter is down to forty-two. Right, which means that now you've got uh, middle-aged and older individuals uh, going out there and fighting wars that you know. Oh, up to forty-two. I mean, it's not the best of circumstances, and once once uh, that starts to deplete, if, if the way things are going, if if this keeps up. You're going to have very few Ukrainian, we'll just say mostly men, uh, that served, that were of serving able body that were in Ukraine. Which means that unless you resort to drones and Terminators to fight the Russians on the battlefront, we're pretty much wasting our time because as a society, we already know what's going to happen. We better just have peace talks with, with Ukraine. Uh, I mean, please, with Russia. Uh, we meaning the happen? West no, what's going that's to kind of instigating what happens to Ukraine. And I don't know, if Ukraine doesn't want to have peace talks, that's fine. But it's one of those, like, it's just, it's inevitable. Like, the, the logistically, it's not going to work. There's not enough men to go around and supplies as well. As long as the West keeps stealing taxpayers' money to forcibly pay for and fund the war, there's going to be supplies, but there's not going to be enough men to man everything. So, I don't know. Like, I can't see how it's short-sighted almost everything that the uh, supporters of all these so we like, should liberal uh, ideas seem to we should seem, not seem support Ukraine and let I already Russia... told you we should have peace talks. All right, speaking on behalf of my friend like, uh, I mean, Putin, you can't, you're making it sound like United States is the king of the world, and whatever United States says, it goes. 
No. Uh, okay. Russia is not ready to have peace okay. talks. Okay, if they're not ready and to have Ukraine peace talks, then we're... Ukraine is not ready to have peace talks. Well, no one's offering... Okay, so then, then, what's then, the then, United then, States... Then they're, they, they, they're going to implode each other. Like, that's, that's not our problem. That's not our business. If Ukraine refuses to, like, actually, you know, wave a white flag, that's on them. Okay. All right, All right so Russia takes takes uh, Ukraine. Yep. Okay. You, you know what's going to happen next? They're going to go nothing. The Baltic states. They're going to go for Poland. You 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 know that for no, a fact. No, no. The the Balt. We're going to start with Lithuania, and uh, uh, and there's a couple other Baltic states before we get to Poland, because they're smaller and uh, okay. And, I, and, maybe... and guess what happens when he does? Whether uh, one of the Baltic states or Poland. Well, World they're, War III is officially started because they started it. They're all in NATO, and guess who's going to be there? We're going to be there. So, World so the War question III. is, are, are you going to uh, attempt to stop him now so you're, with, you're with your donation saying, than not having uh, any Americans' lives lost? So you, Ukraine wants, I mean, you, Putin wants to be known in history as the guy that started World War Three. That's what you, you're basically insinuating. No. No, what I'm insinuating saying, is that you're me, I, I'm going to tell you what I'm insinuating. What I'm insinuating is that Russia or Putin wants the USSR back. He wants to take take back the motherland. It That's what be he nice, wants. But it's not realistic. Oh, somebody tell him that. Why do you think he's in Ukraine? He believes Ukraine is part of Russia and then wants the whole uh, USSR and all the states. You need back. you need overwhelming proof that that Russia and Putin. Insist on wanting to retake everything to 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 risk World War Three to reintroduce the USSR just so they have bragging rights for it. There's nothing that really seems to show that evidence, including the the funding and the really? logistics. Yeah, like people he's, people in Russia are not looking to want it. to invade. People in Russia, I'm talking about Putin. So Putin what? He still needs it. the people to actually follow that. No, he doesn't. It's it's like it's like oh so so what you're saying is that world power brokers, despite the the. The uh, views of the people and their and their wishes, they don't give a shit either way. They're going to still do what they want to do, such as fund Ukraine or start a war in China, or in this case, uh, start a war in China. Yeah, like like the CCP. Who's, the CCP who, who's wanted starting to start a, a war, war in China. Well, in theory, the CCP could start a war. The people in China don't want a war. Oh no, uh, absolutely, they want Taiwan. But yeah, but the CCP wants Taiwan. The, the average yeah. Chinese person does not want to. Like, no, suffer absolutely. Anymore. And and the people have no so, say. So exactly. The only time so you're, the people, what, you're, what you're saying is that the average person has no say anyway. These power brokers are going to do whatever uh, they want. Let, let's let's go to North Korea. Kim okay. Jong Un. Okay. Same thing. You think the people? Okay. Well, well you just brought up you ju- you just proved okay without a doubt. And folks, this is coming from the left. I might add. You you brought without a doubt. You just proved without a doubt that at the end of the day, politics has nothing to do with democracy. Okay, like, like, no matter how much Biden says he's trying to support democracy, it's a farce. Okay, and he knows it because this is, you just proved it with your own words, admission right now, that that's not the real theme behind all this. Evidently, you weren't listening to me the last 15 minutes. Okay. I said Russia. I said China. I said North Korea. Well, but, but people don't want, people still don't want to get involved. They are not democracies. They still don't want to get involved in a war uh, and supporting a war in Ukraine. They don't want to do it. They, 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 the people, the average person right now, you take a poll, they're not interested in funding any more money for Ukraine. Oh, you're talking about the, 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 the average the, United States yeah, citizen. the people, the people that, were, that the U.S. government's supposed to serve. They, were, they don't listen to them, they could care less. Okay, so you just proved that this is not a, a democracy. They're, they're trying to use the term democracy, uh, even, even, even in terms of like trying to restore something for Ukraine. But in the end, it's not a democracy. This is all just... A bunch of megalomaniacs wanting to just like swing cock, as they say, you know, in their respective parts of the world and gain territory. But I, I still don't think that even like the the most megal megalomaniac of megalomaniacs out there uh, has the. Sh- they may be short sighted in some ways, but doesn't have the wisdom to realize that if they start a thermonuclear war, like everything they claim they want is going to go into ruin. I don't buy it. Yeah, I'm laughing too. Yeah, because you it. mentioned thermal nuclear war. Who in the hell is talking about if nuclear Putin, war? If Putin actually was to invade Europe the way you're pr- predicted, okay, we would start inevitably. He would have started World War Three, and by doing that, 
we're gonna go into nukes. We had like like there's gonna be bigger, but he doesn't. He, I don't I don't see him interested in in like annihilating cultures. Not 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 for like small economic benefits of ground here and there. So what what, I see so why did is the exploitation of people's women. What I see is the exploitation of people's fears. Okay, and that that the power brokers of the West and the East know are easy to manipulate, and so they'll just come up with any excuse to manufacture a crisis, and therefore, by our, our own fears, say this has to be stopped at all costs. Now, if this was a a freaking Mike and Crichton novel, right now I'd be like, tell us who you really are, Tyson. You're always supporting all these uh, pro pro war hawk <laughs> instigations. Who do you really serve, huh? Who bought you? What what was their promised price? Can you see that in the movie right now? No. Well, I think we're out of time for this episode. We will we will continue revisiting some of these uh, troubling existential ideas cheerfully in our next episodes of Table for Truth. I hope you enjoyed your evening tonight, and uh, have a bowl of cereal, kick back, and we'll see you soon. Hi, folks! Hit a like and don't forget to subscribe and share the episodes if you like them.